Howdy, it's Matt, and this video is actually for Sir Andrew Newton. And let me explain. Last night I was sat in bed and I was watching Andrew drive his rover around uh, in the playing fields, and you can see his on screen display down here in the right hand corner. Now, that's happy days, that's what iNav does. However, if you're using waypoints, which Andrew is, then there's some additional settings. Now, for those of you which just want to just go with it and whatever, uh, and ignore everything which I'm going to explain, uh, I have put the settings in the video description and I've just shown them on our, on our page up here. So, with that said, uh, let's jump across to the iNav wiki and take a quick look at these settings. Now, I'm going to quickly cover them uh, in briefly and I would suggest just copy and paste the ones which I've got however there is a word of note around OSD um, screens uh, which we'll also need to cover as well so what I've probably already done is put a overlay up in the corner of the screen which is a flight which has got this actually in action. So you'll notice that there are some values moving around the screen, and that's what these settings do. Now there's two different types of settings. There's one for your home marker, and you'll see a H and then a value going around, and I probably cut to a clip from someone else's video, and you'll see that value going down as they reach home, and then it'll go, they go home and it disappears, and then when they leave home, then homes them behind them, and then that number increases. So that's the homing icon, which is fantastic for you on the goggles to get your orientation of where home is in relation to the model. Uh, and of course, this is above and beyond the normal arrow. <laughs> you know what I mean, the arrow at the top of the screen, uh, and the distance to home at the bottom. This is actually a value which moves around the OSD uh, appropriately. Now, the other one, which I think is super cool, is actually, and I, and I would only suggest showing two waypoints in here, and I'll get to that setting in a moment, which is that imagine you've got a set of waypoints, and there's like 18 waypoints in there, um, and is that when you get to a waypoint, you I like, and I'm sure Andrew might like, to know where the next waypoint is, uh, and that's what it will show on the screen. You can show up to three different waypoints on there, but to be honest, it's a bit too much with the home marker as well, uh, so I only have set mine to two, so I could, you maybe you've got to the first one, and then you're on your way to the second one. Not only can you see the second one and the distance to it, which is probably in front of us at the top, um, but then you can see where number three is. So maybe number three is off to our right somewhere. You can then see, okay, I'm gonna go to number two, and then I'm gonna go to number three. And of course, when you get to number two, it then jumps to number three, and then you can see number four, and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? So if you've got any questions about how this works, what I would strongly suggest is that you just copy and paste the values which I've got in the video description. Uh, and if you wanna know more information about any specific ones, then come to this page, and I've put a link to this in the video description. So this is actually the third time I recorded this video, and I actually decided I really didn't like the way the iNav Wiki was formatted, so I kind of edited it a little bit, so it's a little bit more friendly. So what we're gonna quickly do is work our way down the list, and some of them I'm gonna skip because I don't really see the point in them. Uh, so the first one is actually quite nice, is the uh, crosshair style. Now it's set to default by default, okay? But I would suggest, if you fancy a change, try number six, that's pretty cool, okay? I'm gonna skip the camera uplift and the HUD margin, and uh, other than me saying that you might wanna set the uh, a horizontal margin to one, which is I've, what I've got in here. Now displayed arrows, so homing arrows, so that is that value, so H value comes on the screen and you'll see it move around the screen. If you turn that on, then it will appear. Uh, now I don't have that off, okay, uh, sorry, home point I have turned on. Now what else have I got in here? Uh, max uh, so ah, so this is max aircraft is to do with iNav radar. We're not going to go into that right now. That'll be a later video because I've got the radar devices here. I've just not got around to setting them up. That's the next time we should be go out. A uh, radar min range. Now this is to help declutter the on-screen display. Uh, so what that basically means is that if you set yours, and I've got mine set to 30, so in other words, when you get within 30 meters of the waypoint, it disappears from the screen. Obviously the, the model where you're doing a rover uh, or you're doing an aircraft or another boat, for example, uh, is that when you get within 30 meters, okay, is that it will then move on to, um, the model will carry on to whatever the minimum radius you've got set for saying yes to a waypoint. 
uh, and then that that one disappears off the screen and then it starts showing the next ones. Now, I am being a little bit vague there because I know in my head that not only do I have that setting set to 30, is that I also have a waypoint radius set to 40 meters as well because let's face it, with a model airplane, if it's within 40 meters of the waypoint, for me, that's happy days. For you, and maybe for Andrew, who's watching this, uh, is that it might be within one meter, okay? So it's all relative, and that's what you can set on here, and there's the other setting I'll put in the video description for you as well, Andrew. And the next one, uh, that radar max range is to do with uh, the INAV radar. We're gonna ignore that, okay? And the next one is the OSD hub waypoint display two i would suggest you setting that to only two uh because it, the, the the screen just gets too mixed up okay it's just too much information so uh they have listed all the values here but i wouldn't suggest doing all of those okay just copy and paste the ones which i've put in the video in the video description for you now there is one caveat and i need to jump into inav to show you that so let me grab a model and we'll get inav up and running Okay, so we're in now into the iNav configurator and the caveat to this is that these extra objects which appear on the screen, that they only appear on screen number one or your default OSD. So you'll see here is my default uh, screen for the Dart 250G and you'll notice that I've shunted as much as I can up to the top and as much as I can down to the bottom. And the reason for that is that these values move around the screen appropriately, okay? So if you imagine like with INAV radar where you can do the, the other models being transmitted, that would move around there. The same for the waypoints as you move around, that they their position changes to the attitude of the model, whatever it's an aircraft, rover, boat, etc. okay? So that's point number one. You want to move on your default layout, and I'll explain what that is in a moment. You wanna put everything to the top, and to the bottom, as you can see on here. And by the way, what I will do for you is that I will copy up, do a dump out of my uh, Dart 250G, and you can literally just copy and paste those values and it will get you pretty close, okay? Uh, so that's your default layout. So that in mind, okay, you may wanna set up an alternative layout. So you'll notice that I'm using this drop down box up here in the top left hand corner. So I've got default layout, and remember that's the one where these settings play on top okay and that's the one which you want to push stuff to the top and down to the bottom and then on the alternative layout so you can have up to three more alternative layouts is that i've got it back to what normal okay what makes sense for me uh, so with that in mind you may also be wondering well matt how can i switch these osd layouts it's great that i've got four of them but how do i switch them and the answer to that is modes so if we go into the modes tab and then scroll right down to the bottom you'll see OSD Alt 1, OSD Alt 2, and OSD Alt 3. And you'll see, in my case, I've got a three-way switch, and I'm able to click between uh, off, as the case may be down here, so that's the default view. Then when I do the middle switch, then it will jump here, and I've got OSD Alt in the middle one. And then, of course, at the end, uh, is well, it also jumped to OSD 2, which is the second one down in the list. So if I go back to the OSD, that'll make more sense in the moment. So I've got a freeway switch. At the moment, it's off, it's furthest away from me. Then I'll click it to the middle and we'll jump to that screen. And then we'll click jump to that one. And then I've got a much cleaner version uh, for when I'm flying around. And of course, system message doesn't display by default unless there's a system message, which you need, I now needs to tell you. So that is the caveat. You, your first default view, you wanna shunt everything up to the top, everything to the bottom, okay? So Andrew, I hope that helps you. It's really nice watching the, the where you are in relation to the different waypoints. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the one setting which you might want to change from mine, which is the OSD HUD radar range minimum, okay? Uh, so that would be the, the minimum distance for it to uh, show on the screen, okay? So if you're doing something quite compact, you might want to reduce that value. Uh, so maybe you would draw on a pair of boobies like some of us might do uh, using um, a, a mission for example is that if those points are really close to each other within 30 meters then they won't actually show so you might want to drop that value down to five meters for example so Andrew I hope this video helps you and of course you're, if your name's not Andrew or Sir Andrew of Newton uh, then literally you're, if you're using line uh, and you're using waypoint missions and by the way I've got a missions uh, video completely map proof I'll put a link to it in the video description and in the top right hand corner as well 
uh, and this I, I just think it adds that extra level uh, there's no settings in the GUI for it you have to en enter these values down in the CLI tab uh, and you literally just copy them out at the bottom of the page here paste them in the bottom hit return like so and then type in save and press enter and then those values are saved and of course then go off and fly it go and try it okay go and try a waypoint mission uh, and then you'll see what i mean okay it adds all this extra information on the screen and it's pretty cool because when you need the extra information it's on your default on-screen display and then when you don't really want it you can click a switch and then go to a different view and it's a lot more cleaner make sense happy days so with that said, I sincerely hope this video has been and helped you. Uh, by the way, if you're new here, my name's Matt. Howdy, welcome aboard. Don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course, press the bell notification because the next video out could be on also on iNav. We could be doing a mission or maybe just smashing the model up. <laughs> so with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to join me here at the workbench and I'll see you again. Is it? No, it's not the workbench at the work worky bench, not the workbench back there, and I'll see you again shortly. From myself, Matt, cheerios!